Hi, it's Kerry. I've got all my favourite Ceratopsians out on the table today. There are 11 different ones here. I think my two favourites would have to be Triceratops and Styracosaurus, but I really love the ornate frill on Cosmoceratops. I'm going to talk about each one. Oh, and we've got some trouble at the end. Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. It was the dominant herbivore of its time. It lived at the same time and was probably preyed upon by Tyrannosaurus. When threatened, Triceratops would charge into its enemy like a rhinoceros. Triceratops was quite fearsome to look at with its large bony frill, three horns and massive size. And here's another Triceratops. Triceratops is the biggest and best known of all Ceratopsians. Its three magnificent horns give it its name. The horn cones are covered in a bony sheath that makes them seem much bigger. The neck frill protects the back of the skull and is bordered by little knobs of bone. The teeth work like shears and are powered by strong jaw muscles. This Triceratops has movable arms, legs and head. It's quite a nice model, very lightweight. And it means you can set it up in a post or use it for stop motion. Can you tell me how long was the nose horn on Styracosaurus? The frill and three facial horns may have been used as weapons against predators. More recent theories Note that these features were primarily used in identification, courtship and dominance displays, much like the antlers and horns of modern animals. The frill would have acted as a protective shield. The frill may have also been used in courtship rituals. Triceratops was a massive size, comparable in size to an African elephant. Ceratopsids may have also used their horns within their own species over territory or mating rides. Ah, this is another movable one. The tail moves on this one as well. Triceratops had strong limbs to move and support its massive body. The forelimbs, which were shorter than the rear ones, each had three hooves. Their rear limbs had four hooves. Styracosaurus was a Ceratopsian dinosaur from the Cretaceous period. I really like this dinosaur for its impressive and intimidating appearance. It had six long horns extending from its neck frill with smaller horns above each eye and a 60 centimeter or two foot long horn protruding from its nose. This is my big one. Styracosaurus was a relatively large dinosaur, reaching lengths of 5.5 metres, which is 18 feet. It stood about 6 feet tall, or 1.8 metres. Styracosaurus possessed four short legs and a bulky body and a short tail. The skull had a beak and shearing cheek teeth that were continually replaced, used for slicing up plants. The strong beak was used for snapping branches. Baby Triceratops. During a Triceratops juvenile years, its horns were little stubs that curved backwards. As the animal continued to grow into young adulthood, the horns straightened out. Finally, the horns curved forward and grew up to three feet long or one meter. And another little one. This is the Triceratops carcass. Don't look if you don't like looking at gory things. One good thing about this, you can see those cheek teeth there, just on the side of the mouth. Here's some Ceratopsians from Dinosaur Train. 
the head of Triceratops was amongst the largest of all land animals, some making up one third of the entire length of the dinosaur's body. Arniosaurus, this one's from Dinosaur Train, lived in the late Cretaceous period. It had a long, forward curving snout horn, two large bony horns on its neck frill, and many smaller ones, and bony ridges over the eyes. T-Rex would have probably preyed on Arniosaurus. It was a medium-sized herbivore. Their name means buffalo lizard. Another baby. The largest skull found had an estimated length of 8.2 feet, which is two and a half meters. I'm talking about an adult Triceratops here. Triceratops lived about 68 million years ago in what is now North America. Although Triceratops are commonly portrayed as herding animals, there is currently little evidence that they lived in herds. Scientists can tell this by observing bone beds and there is actually no known bone bed with lots of Triceratops bones in it. Chasmosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period about 76 to 70 million years ago. It grew to 16 feet long and weighed around 2 tons. Chasmosaurus had three short horns on its face along with a large bony frill projecting from the back of its skull. Notice the corners of the frills featured two larger osteoderms. There was one short wide horn on its snout above its parrot-like beak and two backward facing brow horns were above its eyes. It had a large skull, four sturdy legs with hoof-like claws, a bulky body and a short pointed tail. Pentaceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. It was about 6 metres or 20 feet long. It had a short nose horn, two long brow horns and long horns on the dugal bones on the side of its cheeks. Its skull had a very long frill with triangular hornlets on the edge. Its name means five horned face. Only three are true horns, the other two are elongated cheekbones. Styracosaurus like other ceratopsians, this dinosaur may have been a herding animal traveling in large groups as fossils grouped together have been found in bone beds. Like most ceratopsids, Styracosaurus had large fenestrae in its frill. Pachyrhinosaurus, a very distinctive looking dinosaur. It lived in the late Cretaceous period. It lived in herds and traveled in large groups. Like other ceratopsians, its frill had several large horns on the outside and the two smaller horns on top of the frill. This Pachyrhinosaurus is made by Papo. I think it's my favourite. Its strong beak could snap branches and break off ferns. Its top running speed may have been about 15 miles per hour. Over a dozen partial skulls and a large assortment of other fossils from various species have been found in Alberta and Alaska. Regaloceratops is a genus of herbivorous ceratopsid dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period about 68 million years ago in what is now Canada. It is closely related to Triceratops. Arniosaurus. The adults have a firm nasal horn which is curved towards the front and bottom directions. The nasal horn is a lookalike for a bottle opener. Cosmoceratops, one of my favourite ceratopsians. Its name means ornate horn face and that's what I really like. It had the most ornate downward curving frill of any known dinosaur. The horns above the eyes are long, thin and pointed. Pachyrhinosaurus 
is an extinct genus of Centrosaurine ceratopsid dinosaur. The largest Pachyrhinoceros species was 8 meters or 26 feet long. It weighed about 4 tons. They were herbivorous and possessed strong cheek teeth to help them chew through tough fibrous plants. Instead of horns, their skulls bore massive flashing bosses, a large boss over the nose and a smaller one over the eyes. A prominent pair of horns grew over the frill and extended upwards. Nasutu ceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. It had unique, long, rounded horns above its eyes, much like cattle. Its skull would grow to nearly 5 feet and its body nearly 16 feet. The snout is quite well developed and there is a very small flat horn on the nose. It lived in wetlands in a humid climate. Achillosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period and was a four-legged herbivore with a parrot-like beak, a raised bony snout and brows and featured two distinctive horns on its neck frill. They could grow up to 20 feet long and weighed three tons. Diabloceratops lived during the late Cretaceous period. It is an extinct genus of Centrosaurine ceratopsian dinosaur that lived in what is now Utah in the United States. It was a medium-sized, moderately built, ground-dwelling quadrupedal herbivore that could grow up to an estimated 18 feet in length. And here's another one. The Spanish word Diablo means devil, a reference to the horns on the neck shield and the word ceratops of course means horned face. Diablo ceratops was built like a typical ceratopsian. It had a small horn on the nose, perhaps a second horn in front of that and a pair of relatively small horns above the eyes. The skull is deeper and shorter than that of any other centrosaurines. Upon the frill, it also had a pair of very long spikes, a little bit like Styracosaurus. The area where these dinosaurs lived, flood plains, rivers with a wet seasonal climate approximately 79 million years ago. Such a great range of ceratopsians. I've just realised I've missed out an important dinosaur, the Cytacosaurus. It was also a ceratopsian, but not quite so obvious. Thank you for watching my video. It really helps if you can share my videos on any of the social media sites that you like to visit. See you again soon.